I'm Troy Kirby with Linwood Today with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. The House Public Safety Committee heard public testimony on a gross second substitute Senate Bill 5163 concerning the conditional release of sexually violent incarcerated felons. The bill passed the Senate on March 8th by a vote of 2722 and would have to pass the House in order to make its way to the governor's office to be signed into law. The reason that I'm bringing it forward is because of the experience in my legislative district a couple of years ago. So to Representative Simmons' point, I don't know the exact lawsuit or the exact court case, um, but somewhere along the way in the last few years, um, it was ruled that the people at on McNeil Island have actually have constitutional rights, and those include not being incarcerated after they've served their time if they can be released into the community. Maybe DSHS or somebody else can speak more specifically to that um, lawsuit. Um, so, uh, so the legislature put in place a process for how people should be released or can be released. But because none of us ever want to work on this, it's a really imprecise and poorly um, defined process. I, I have a question. I know that you mentioned that you that you sat at the table with all, all the people that should be there. I can't help wondering how many of the crime victims that may have had their lives permanently altered forever, especially by a persistent offender, were at that table. I I wonder how many people that don't support this were included in that conversation. I want to be clear, I did not sit at the table. I requested that the table be convened and that and I requested that the recommendations be brought to the legislature. Um, but that question is probably for somebody testifying because I was not there. Um, and then I want to just reiterate that um, this is, this is uh, Representative Graham, I know your issue um, with crime victims. And I want to say this bill is intended to make sure that crime victims aren't re-victimized and, vict and that new victims don't emerge. The average age of an FCC resident is now well over 50, with some of them in their 70s and 80s. Many people being released would be eligible for extensive services from the Developmental Disabilities Administration if in the community and are often classified as vulnerable adults. Others have complex medical needs and physical disabilities, and the majority of residents I work with have been in state-run facilities their entire adult lives and will likely need specialized supports and services when released. I want to speak to you today mostly about the process that brings this bill before you. Um, as you may know, the parties have been working on this issue for many years, as Representative Goodman just mentioned, and uh, this process began in the last session with a bill that was put forward by Representative Levitt and um, Kilfee, uh, or excuse me, Kilduff. They um, got so far, and then Senator Rolfe was asked that the Sex Offender Policy Board take a look at this issue. I want to assure the members of this committee that the process has been comprehensive, that all stakeholders have been at the table. The legislation requires the department to develop the discharge plans for all residents, regardless of whether the department supports the release. This creates a unique problem of forcing the department to work against our professional judgment. The department requests making discharge plans only for supported releases. Second, the bill imposes a 90-day requirement to identify a transitional setting. Defense Council doesn't currently have this time limitation while undertaking discharge planning. The lack of available housing and qualified community treatment providers can slow down this process in a way that's out of the department's control. It is incredibly rare that you see defense attorneys, attorney generals, um, stakeholders, survivors groups all on the same page. We are on the same page on 5163. You asked us to work together and we put in a lot of work. Please listen to us. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by Linwood Today, covering the 2021 legislative session.